So here we go. Okay, step number three, preventing construction stormwater pollution with a SWIP, right? So um, SWIPs are one of those things that are called for in our stormwater permit that we're required to review. So uh, we like to see them. We like to see that uh, um, uh, projects are, are aware that they have to control their construction stormwater uh, runoff and, and not cause pollution to our receiving water bodies or to our groundwater. So um, we, uh, again, are, we encourage all of our sites to put together some sort of a, a, a pollution prevention plan. We, uh, we try to make it uh, very simple to do as far as going through our, our checklist to find out whether you need to do it or not. And like I mentioned, um, for, for our sites that require it, I've taken the, the ecology's template and basically put together all the BMPs that are in uh, uh, chapter seven that are applicable to the site. And I've put together, put the permit on there and I've done everything uh, that can be done for folks so that all they have to do is fill in the pertinent information. So um, whether or not you fall under the um, uh, ecology's uh, construction stormwater general permit or not, we encourage everyone to, to fill that, that template out and and make sure that they are compliant because we have uh, like i say we have we have track out issues just like all jurisdictions do and uh if they've got a pollution prevention plan that's that's there and that they're trying to uh enact we can point right to that and say look you've you've got to improve this you've got to do something better okay checklists um as i mentioned before we do provide these checklists they are uh, the, the point of view of these checklists are, are more from, I think they were developed for uh, the reviewer's standpoint, where the reviewer can sit down and basically go through uh, the project with the material that's been uh, submitted and check off whether or not they have what they need. Um, obviously, if a site uh, or a proponent has done their due diligence, knows what they're doing, uh, the checklist is kind of a moot point because their information that they've turned in is, um, it's, it's, it's adequate. And sometimes it's, it's better than adequate. And that's a good thing. So typically, we don't have to whip out the che checklist here until the project that's, that's comes in that is, it doesn't have enough information, and, and, it's, and it's not supplied. So, but we try to flip that a little bit when folks come in. And when we talk about our handbook, we actually try to point them to those checklists to begin with and say, hey, look, checklists are there. Please use them uh, so that you can make sure that you're including everything that you need. That's the point at which if you have a question, you can send me an email, give me a phone call and let me know or ask me a question as far as, as what you think. And we can discuss this. Uh, the last thing that you want uh, as a proponent is to turn something in, have it to go into our queue, maybe sit there for a while and us take a look at it and go, oh, gee, I'm sorry, uh, you missed a couple of things that we need to see, right? So it's better to answer those questions in advance than it is to, uh, to wait further on. Okay, now, plan sets, standard plans, plan notes, okay? So this is kind of getting into the detail of what's being turned in now. Uh, this is typically for our uh, medium and large projects. These details are really important. Um, each jurisdiction has uh, probably their own set of standard plans, obviously, or uh, they reference the WashDOT uh, standard plans that are out there. That's pretty much 100% of all the projects that come in, at least to us anyway, are, are, are that. Um, we encourage all of our proponents to put together a set of plans that has all the detail information in it that it needs, okay? Uh, it's one thing to put it into the um, uh, report and to say that, um, for example, you're going to put uh, uh, such and such BMP in, uh, you're going to have sedimentation manholes, you're going to have uh, UIC galleries, that's great. Um, 
But what we also want to see is we want to see that uh, that plan on a piece of paper or electronically that someone is going to have out at the site where they're going to be able to actually build from it, right? And you need to have all those notes that are on there that are really important. So, um, for example, one of the one of the uh, most common things that that we see here is uh, we we get we get developers that want to turn in plans that have uh, really nice uh, BMPs in them. For example, uh, they're going to do bioinfiltration, right? So they come up with a, swan, uh, a, a plan for a swale, they draw it in there, and they put a little note on there that says uh, bioretention soil mixture uh, needs to meet uh, ecology standards. Okay, well, uh, I know where that is in the, in the manual, I know where to find it, but the guy that's out there building this, when he sees a set of plans, he's not going to have the manual, he's not going to know how to do it, okay? So what we require is, is that we require them to put ecology's information uh, in a standard note on the plans. That way it's all right there. They can reference what the infiltration rates are supposed to be. They can reference what the organic content is supposed to be. They can reference what the CEC value is supposed to be. So they'll know what's expected of them because as you know, you can't just go down to the local hardware store and buy BSM, right? It's really kind of hard to get. You have to, you have to build it yourself sometimes. So those details are really important, okay? Also, any of the, the standard plans that you have that are part of your um, uh, jurisdiction, right? You have standard manhole plans, standard catch basin plans, standard uh, 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 infiltration gallery or um, uh, UIC well plans. All those need to go on to into the plan set, right? And a lot of times what we'll do is, is we have developers come in and, and, or engineers and they'll put a standard plan in there and maybe there's an envelope, size of an envelope that's around the um, um, UIC dry well. They'll, they'll put a reference table in there and they'll just, you know, it's a, little, it's a little matrix box that says, you know, this one has to have this size. The second one has to have this size. Maybe they're not all the same size. Okay, maybe they're not all built the same way. Those types of, of notes and details are all really important. The other thing, uh, as, as we move on here, uh, having, having all of the, both the grading, the water and the sewer, all of that information together in one plan set, really important to have as a reviewer. You don't want to uh, not have the information that you need. And if you need to you know, ask for more detail, as to where all your utilities are going to go on the site, especially if it's if it's in a right of way area that your jurisdiction is going to manage. Okay, so ready to review? Well, I don't know. You'll have to make that decision, right? So you're going to have to uh, to ask yourself some questions when you take a look at things when you when you crack these things open and look at them for the first time and decide where are you at. So if they're, if they're proposing some sort of infiltration BMP, um, did they characterize the soil correctly, right? Um, uh, how many, uh, how did they determine the ADTs or the trip ends, correct? Do, do, they, do they know, did they just, did they come up with some number? Do they, do they have some sort of a, a document that shows this, all right? So, um, are they proposing UICs? Well, did they follow the site suitability criteria uh, listed there in uh, uh, section 5.6 of the manual? Uh, as Doug mentioned earlier, it's a little bit different than the core elements. A lot of times uh, proposals come in and they kind of get their wires crossed on that, right? And then if, uh, if not, are they, uh, do they have the right core elements uh, applied to the project and how did they come up with those? Right. So if you have something that helps uh, uh, let them know what that is, then be sure and reference that whenever you go back to decide whether or not it's it's enough, if they've submitted enough information or not. Right. So um, uh, some of the things that that I tend to look at and uh, 
use is important is you ask or require that your design information be summarized in tables and in clear graphics, right? So if you're looking at a proposal, you don't want to read through pages and pages of uh, the report to find out how much PGIS there is or NPGIS, right? You don't want to find out, you don't want to have to, to read through another couple of pages to find out what the size of the basin area is. Uh, ask the uh, uh, designer to put in concise tables that show you all of this, that summarize that, have them refer back to any type of plan or map that's in the report that actually delineates what the basins are, what's draining to where, and uh, how much um, uh, PGIS or NPGIS is actually in there. It really makes a difference in how much time you have to spend uh, to, to put all that together. The other thing is be very consistent with your uh, designers and developers so that you spend less time doing the review. Um, part of this is, you know, we're training the trainer here. It's also um, training the proponent. Uh, you want your proponents to know what you're looking for and why you're looking for that. And you want to be consistent with that each and every time, right? Because you don't want them guessing. If they're guessing, then they're spending their clients money and uh, they're not getting their proposals reviewed and approved. So we don't, we don't like to do that. Next thing is revise, resubmit, repeat. Okay, I'm sure you all know about this. It's called design by review. Um, we all tend to do it. It's not actually a, a, a great habit to fall into. So try to only review complete submittals. Uh, it's the one of the pet peeves I think of all reviewers is, is, is not, not trying to do a review on something that's incomplete. And then finally, consult your um, stormwater manual and other references frequently for your responses. Don't be afraid to quote chapter and verse, right? If there's a, a, a portion of the manual that you need to, to point out or a portion of your handbook, or your standards, be sure and point that out in your uh, comments, in your review, all right? Let them know where you're going and, and how you got there so that they can uh, basically find the same path as you. Okay, do we ask too many questions or require too much information? Okay, here you go. Um, maybe, but probably not. I'd rather have more information than less, right? So if UICs are being proposed, do you wait for the ecology approval or the rule of authorization before approving the design? Uh, here at the city of Walla Walla, the answer is yes, you do. Because um, that is, uh, even though it's being proposed uh, as uh, uh, maybe a flow control or treatment uh, BMP on your site, it is a, a program that's covered uh, by ecology. So far be it for me to uh, approve something that ecology may not approve. So the answer is yes, I would, rate, I would wait for that. Do you require verification of BSM infiltration rate and material testing prior to installation of BMPs? The answer here in the city of Walla Walla is yes, we do. Um, and we wanna see that in advance. So sometimes that means that they're mixing it up a day or two beforehand before they're placing it in the swales. That's okay. Um, we have a hotline to call in for inspections call that hotline, let us know whenever that stuff's done, we can come out, we can look at the testing results. If you want to perform an infiltration test in front of us, that's acceptable too. We, uh, we like that stuff, right? So um, if the project requires a construction stormwater general permit, do you allow the construction to start without a permit? Great question. Get that all the time. Uh, the answer is it depends, okay? It depends. You have to remember that uh, that is an ecology permit as well. Um, and there are certain uh, parts of that permit that um, do allow for coverage of the site, even though the official letter may not have been um, sent out by ecology. So therefore, it kind of depends on the jurisdiction. Uh, for us, it actually depends on the developer and who's doing the work and whether or not they're trustworthy or not, okay? So if we know them, if we trust them, if there is not a high probability that there's going to be a, a construction stormwater pollution runoff, then uh, yes, maybe we do let them start work. 
Um, we also perform our own uh, site inspections out there. So we are aware of what's going on and we tend to work with the ecology stormwater site inspector closely. So um, it just, it just depends on the site and what trust you have. And again, that, that goes over here to the next one, which is what is your level of trust with the contractor and the project? Obviously, if it's a sensitive area, uh, you want to you put a little bit more uh, emphasis on protection than, uh, than, than not. If you're in a residential area, let's say, for example, you're doing a, a, a reconstruction or replacement project in a neighborhood, you're going to have to you're going to have to um, have a really high level of trust with your contractor and know what's going on. Know that he's going to be taking care of everything on the site out there from uh, construction water uh, runoff to, for example, dust, which is a big problem over here on the east side. And then how often should you inspect a project to ensure it's being built according to the approved plans? Well, again, that's up to you. Um, there are the, requ the required inspections that are in the permit, but um, I would suggest that you want to inspect that site uh, way more frequently than that, right? Even if it's a windshield inspection that your inspectors are doing, you need to keep tabs on what's going on out there. Uh, trust me, the one time, the one day, uh, or the one week that something's going wrong on the site from whatever reason it is, is going to be that week whenever um, either the state inspector drives by or the city manager drives by or someone else that's in your jurisdiction that is going to complain. And the one thing you don't want is your phone to ring because it will if there's something going wrong. 